In the opening scene, we are introduced to a young farm boy named Jack, who lives in the kingdom of Cloyster with his father. Jack is fascinated by a tale about giants and asks his father to read it to him before bedtime. As his father begins the story, we are taken to the story's world. Many years ago, a group of monks found magic beans, which they hoped would create a pathway to God. But to their dismay, all they did was fart instead. <laughs> These beans sprouted into something unexpected, a gateway to Gantua, the place between heaven and earth where menacing giants lived. These giants descended through the beanstalk and unleashed havoc upon the world. The human race suffered greatly as they stormed the castle and plundered the palace. One day, an ancient king, Eric, discovered a solution to subdue the giants. He melted the heart of one of them and created a magical crown, which he used to banish them back to Gantua, imprisoning them forever. As the king passed away, the remaining the remaining five magical beans were buried with him, and the tale became a legend. Young Jack worries about the possibility of the giants breaking free again, but his father reassures him that it's just a story, and the giants don't exist. After the old man departs, Jack continues to read the story and learns that the giants will return to annihilate humanity. <laughs> Jack's not sleeping tonight. On the other hand, a queen simultaneously reads the same story to her little princess, Isabel. She says that King Eric was real and that she's of her blood. In response, the little girl mentions that she's seen his grave. This raises concerns for her mother, as she realizes that Isabel has been wandering around. Nevertheless, she doesn't say anything, believing that Isabel should know everything before ascending to the throne one day. The scene then fast forwards ten years, and a grown-up Jack now lives with his uncle after his father's death. One day, he is sent to town to sell their horse and cart. When he reaches there, Jack gets distracted by a theater that is retelling the story of King Eric and the giants. Upon sneaking in, he catches sight of a beautiful girl in the audience, and immediately develops a crush on her. Amidst the show, a group of thugs begins harassing the girl, so Jack decides to intervene. Despite getting punched in the face, he attempts to reason with the troublemakers to let the girl go. Right then, a group of royal guards, led by Elmont, arrives, prompting everyone to kneel. The girl mounts a horse, revealing herself as none other than Princess Isabel. After their departure, Jack walks out, only to discover that his cart has been stolen. Meanwhile, at the palace, Lord Roderick and his assistant Wick are seen strolling down a corridor, discussing his marriage to the princess. During this, they stumble upon a monk, but they let him pass. Shortly afterward, Roderick enters his room and realizes that the monk has made off with the magic beans. He then immediately orders the guards to seal off the town gates and apprehend the monk. Outside, the monk approaches Jack and offers to pay him ten times the horse's value. But lacking immediate funds, he hands Jack the magic beans as collateral and asks him to bring them to the monastery in exchange for a huge sum of money. Jack hesitates, but the monk grabs his horse and escapes, cautioning him not to get the beans wet. I've seen gremlins. I know how this goes. Back at the castle, Princess Isabel is brought before her father, King Bromwell, who scolds her for leaving the palace without an escort. She tries to make him understand that she is not a baby and that she can roam around freely, but he is having none of it. Instead, he declares that she will soon get married to Roderick. Hearing this, the princess gets upset, so she leaves the room abruptly. In the meantime, Jack returns to his uncle, who is incensed at him for exchanging the horse for beans. <laughs> Friggin' beans, Jack? Are you Stupid? He angrily flings the beans and reprimands Jack for his lack of responsibility or brains or anything at all really, urging him to act more like a grown-up. Later that night, Princess Isabel disregards her father's words and sneaks out of the palace. However, when she is caught in a heavy rainstorm, she seeks shelter in a nearby farmhouse. Coincidentally, it turns out to be Jack's. Back at the palace, Roderick and Wick have caught the monk and are interrogating him about the magic beans, but he refuses to divulge anything. This infuriates Roderick. So Oh, he slices the monk's throat with his sword. Whoa, thought this was PG. As the rain continues, one of the beans beneath Jack's house begins to get wet. Jack and Isabel have a brief conversation, during which she expresses her gratitude for his earlier intervention. When he asks her about what she's running away from, she mentions that she's looking for an adventure. Jack then gives her his storybook, hoping she can find what she is looking for. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when the house begins to shake violently. Moments later, a massive bean stock bursts through the floor and grows rapidly towards the sky, taking the farmhouse along with it. Jack is thrown out of the house, while Isabel gets stuck inside. Jack hurriedly gets up and clings onto the house. As it continues to rise, he loses his grip and plummets, managing to grasp 
only Isabel's bracelet. The next morning, King Bromwell wakes him up and asks why he has his daughter's bracelet. Jack then explains the incident in detail, prompting the king to dispatch his men to rescue his daughter. Following this, Jack, Roderick, and Wick volunteer to join the king's knights, led by Elmont and his second-in-command, Craw. They embark on a relentless ascent of the beanstalk, scaling it day and night without rest. Upon reaching a certain height, Roderick, who has some hidden agenda in mind, secretly instructs Wick to cut off the rope, which causes the guards to fall to their deaths. The following day, they make it to the top and discover the giant's realm. Before advancing further, Roderick and Wick stop Jack and forcibly seize the remaining beans from him. However, the boy manages to hide one bean for himself. As they continue their journey, they come across Isabel's footprints as well as the book Jack had previously given her. When she asked for adventure, she didn't want a stupid book. She ditched it. At this point, they decide to split into two groups, one consisting of Jack, Elmont, and Craw, and the other including Roderick, Wick, and a guard. A while later, Elmont's group comes across a herd of sheep and decides to hunt one for their meal. Unbeknownst to them, there's a trap, resulting in Jack and Craw getting captured. They somehow manage to free themselves, but soon hear something approaching, sensing imminent danger. Elmont and Craw take cover behind a rock and a tree, while Jack hides underwater. Soon after, a gigantic figure appears and finds Craw. He tries to run away, but the giant gets to him in a few leaps. As it prepares to eat him, Elmont comes to his aid, but he also ends up getting captured. Following this, the giant takes them away, and Jack follows. Meanwhile, the other group reaches the edge of a cliff. It's at this moment that Roderick tricks the guard and pushes him off the cliff. Moments later, another giant appears and eats Wick. Roderick manages to save himself by pulling out the magical crown just before the creature attacks him. In the next scene, Jack follows the giant to their stronghold, where the two-headed giant leader named Fallon has caged Isabel. It asks about how she ended up there, but she doesn't answer. Not long after, Elmont and Craw are brought there as well. Fallon interrogates them, and when Craw becomes confrontational, the giants devour him. After a while, Roderick walks in wearing the crown, which compels all the giants to kneel before its power. But instead of rescuing Isabel and Elmont, he ascends to the throne and declares himself as the giant's new leader. We are powerless before the cringe of the crown. He then orders the giants to serve as his army and conquer the world, starting with the kingdom of Cloyster. Meanwhile, Jack hides himself from the giants and eventually locates Isabel and Elmont, who are being prepared to be eaten. While the giant is facing away, he hands Elmont a knife, allowing him to cut himself free. Shortly after, the giant grabs Isabel and prepares to chop her up, but in the nick of time, Jack takes a cooking knife, jumps onto its back, and stabs it to death. After this, the trio makes their way out. On the way, Jack helps Isabel by applying some herbal medication to her wounds, making her feel better. The three of them soon reach the edge, where they find a giant sleeping. Jack quickly comes up with a plan. He puts a swarm of bees in the giant's face and... <laughs> That's a plan, for sure. And hastily retreats to hide. A few moments later, the giant becomes agitated, loses his balance, and tumbles off the cliff. Despite eliminating the threat, Elmont decides to stay back, emphasizing his need to retrieve the magical crown from Roderick. As a result, Jack and Isabel reluctantly bid him farewell and descend the beanstalk. At the base of the beanstalk, the king and the townsfolk witness the deceased giant's body. Fearing the tale turning into reality, the king orders his men to cut down the beanstalk, sacrificing his daughter's life for the sake of the kingdom. As night falls, Jack and Isabel take a break to look down at their kingdom from the heights. The atmosphere suddenly takes on a romantic turn, and the two end up kissing. The beans got wet, Jack, and now so have I. Unbeknownst to them, the process of cutting down the beanstalk is rapidly underway. The next morning, at Gantua, an army of giants led by Roderick reaches the brink. Seeing this, Elmond launches an attack on him, sparking a brawl between the two. In the course of their struggle, Roderick inadvertently drops the remaining beans. At one point of the fight, he shoves Elmont to the edge, nearly causing him to fall. Despite this, Elmont manages to grasp Roderick's sword and stab him to death. But, in an unexpected turn of events, Fallon grabs Roderick's dead body and retrieves the crown. He then puts it on as a ring and declares himself as the new King of the Cringe. On the other hand, the King's forces successfully cut off the beanstalk, triggering a violent tremor. Jack and Isabel feel it and quickly realize that they're about to fall, as a sheer mass of the stalk hurtles down 
Elmont jumps off and reaches the stock just in the nick of time. Meanwhile, Jack asks Isabel to hold him tightly as he grabs a rope and swings down like friggin' Tarzan. The pair land in a field while Elmont manages to jump in water, successfully saving themselves. In the aftermath, the king is more than happy to have his daughter safely returned. Isabel confides in him about Roderick's treachery, prompting the king to express his regret for his mistake. She also introduces him to Jack, the hero who saved her life. The king then proceeds to reward Jack, acknowledging that no amount of gratitude is enough for his heroic deeds. Following this, Isabel rides back to the palace with her father. However, it turns out that the threat isn't neutralized yet. Fallon finds the remaining beans and throws them in the water, prompting them to sprout instantly. The giants then climb down onto the beanstalks and make their way down. Jack notices them descending, so he rushes to inform the king. But just a few minutes later, the giants land on the base and make their chase. They begin killing the king's men, one after another. Meanwhile, at the palace, Elmont readies the army for battle, preparing defenses such as hot oil and archers. As soon as the survivors enter the palace, the guards, under Elmont's command, ignite the oil. They simultaneously lift up the drawbridge to keep the giants at bay. Fallon manages to jump on, but Elmont strikes him with the arrows, pushing him into the fire. Despite this, Fallon manages to swim underwater and survive. Now, the rest of the giants prepare to pull down the drawbridge with large hooks. Where'd they get hooks? While the guards try to hold the bridge, the king instructs Jack and his daughter to go to his chamber and alert the other kingdoms. Following this, Isabel leads Jack through a shortcut, passing King Eric's grave. Once they get into the chamber, they feel some vibration emanating from beneath. Not long after, Fallon emerges from the floor, prompting the pair to run away. Outside, the guards, Elmont, as well as the king, struggle to hold onto the bridge as the giants throw burning trees and heavy objects, thus weakening their defenses. On the other hand, the chase is cut short as Fallon grabs Isabel after breaking through the wall. In an attempt to rescue her, Jack grabs an axe and jumps towards the giant, but he's also captured. Fallon is about to eat him when Jack, at the last moment, throws the remaining bean into the creature's mouth. They instantly start to grow in his stomach and rip his body apart. As a result, Fallon's hand with the magical crown falls into the ground. Meanwhile, the other giants destroy the drawbridge and make their way inside. They march towards the humans, but before they can inflict any harm, they voluntarily throw their weapons and kneel down. It's because of Jack, who walks out wearing the crown, finally taking control of the situation and looking the cringest of them all. The scene then skips ahead by several years, and we see Jack and Isabel, now a married couple, reading the ending part of the story to their children. The kids ask about the crown's whereabouts, to which Jack responds that it's in a safe place where no one can see it. As time elapses, the magic crown is crafted into St. Edward's crown and is secured in the Tower of London. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.